What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Why Not RV. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Chris, and today we're gonna to talk about installing a DC to DC battery charger. Some of you might first be asking, what is a DC to DC battery charger? Um, I know I'd never heard of one until I started to look into inverters and how to recharge my batteries while I'm driving and all that stuff. So let me explain it a little bit. It's pretty simple, really. A DC to DC battery charger is exactly what it says it is. It is a DC, my truck, to DC, my trailer, battery charger. Um, the reason I installed an inverter on my system is because we're doing a lot of boondocking at Harvest Hosts this trip coming up. And with that much harvest host boondocking overnight where we're just charging cell phones, watching TV, stuff like that, you know, the batteries will make it through the night. But the next day when we're driving, I need those batteries to recharge fully. So in order to do that, uh, the seven pin connector off your regular trailer wiring is not going to charge your batteries enough. It'll trickle charge a little bit to like maintain, but it's not going to recharge after a night of watching TV, charging your cell phone, stuff like that. So a DC to DC battery charger is gonna provide proper voltage to recharge those batteries. Um, and there's, there's several different sizes, 25 amp, 20 amp, 40 amp. Uh, I think I've even seen one that was 60 amp. Uh, I decided to go with a 40 amp just cause that's the kind of rate of charge that I want out of mine. Um, but you know, do a little bit of research on your batteries and your need for it and decide what you want for your rig. So if that doesn't explain what a DC to DC battery charger is. I'm not sure what else will. Um, maybe the only other thing to really explain would be just like your regular converter in your RV that charges your batteries when you're hooked up to shore power. That's all it does is it just charges your batteries when you're hooked up to your DC power, your truck or your driving rig, whatever it is that you have. Um, even, even class A's and uh, class B's vans, you can do a DC to DC charger in those to charge from your starting battery you know your alternator and its running source into the house batteries for while you're driving you can do the same thing so i've cut off the ends of these jumper cables this is just a two gauge jumper cable that i went ahead and just cut the tips off and now i have 30 feet of two gauge wire uh, both black and red positive and negative that i'm going to go ahead and run through this little hole right here um, that way it's right above my seven pin connector and i'll be able to use that uh, to connect to my battery in the engine bay and have my battery uh, DC to DC charge controller connected from the truck into the trailer nice and easily. All right, let's go ahead and just fish some of this down. It dropped right out the bottom of the truck. Fish a bunch of it through. So we have a bunch for running. I'm just gonna leave a little bit in the truck bay. Now I have that cable run through the truck bed and pops out down underneath the truck and I can go ahead and run that along the frame. Nice benefit of a big diesel truck is uh, you don't need to jack it up when you're trying to run wires. <laughs> Just crawl down on your uh, creeper and here we go. We've gone from the truck bed down above the frame there being sure to stay clear of any kind of uh, moving parts or hot materials and now we're working on coming down over the rear axle all right so i have the cables ran up to here got them run back behind my fuse panel box back Let's see if i can get the right angle on this back down there right on top of the wheel well, and then down to underneath. And once the cables come down from the engine bay above the wheel well, I go above the frame here, and I have them coming through. The, uh, this is for the, my side step, a little mount for the side step. So they're up there, all the way to the back. And then they go up over more part of the frame. Down through this little piece here that holds onto the, some of the brake line stuff. And up back there, which goes over my airlift. 
once it comes over the airlift. I got it coming right up through here, down and around and up into the truck bed. Now we just have to go ahead and zip tie and secure that line uh, everywhere we can. So I like to do it about every six inches or so, um, or just as many spots as you possibly can. You want that line as tight as possible so that it is not gonna rub or vibrate or move at all. Now that I have my cable run, we're gonna go ahead and make our connections to the uh, two gauge plug which is this guy right here. And then the other one's gonna have to get put on the uh, trailer. As these little lugs, or these connectors that go on, and then that then go into the connector. New plan. All right, so I had to kind of makeshift a little something because I shot myself in the foot and didn't make this connection before I ran the cable. So now I have to make the connection up here. So either I buy a hydraulic crimper, uh, which I don't want to spend the extra money, or I break open or I break some concrete all over my truck bed. So I got the one, the negative side connected, and now we're gonna go ahead and get the positive side so you guys can see what I did. Just in the nick of time, <laughs> the concrete is breaking up, but at least I got my two connections. Now that I've made a complete mess of my engine bay, I'm gonna go ahead and make this connection inside here. These are labeled pretty clearly positive and negative. So as long as you do that the right way on both uh, the truck end and the trailer end, you'll be okay. And these literally just slide right in all the way to the front and you'll hear them click um, because it comes up over that lip here. I'll try and try and get this on video so you can see comes up over that lip right there and then clicks right in place. Boom. So now these are both solid connections. Of course, because I'm recording, I screwed up and forgot to uh, connect my um, little tether for this that keeps all the dust and, and debris from inside there so what i went ahead and did is use my little tweaker tool and i depressed that thing to get one of these cables out and now i can go ahead and put the tether around it and put it back in and call it a day so from the truck battery i have a 60 amp fuse on the positive side and a negative is just connected straight to the negative and that runs down underneath my truck all the way to the back to where I now have it poked out the side right there so that I can plug in from the trailer. Just like my connection in the truck bed, this is the two gauge, uh, the other end of that connector that is attached to the trailer. Um, so I went ahead and ran two gauge wiring. I zip tied it really tightly uh, with my seven pin connector. So it goes up and in to where the seven pin connector goes and I have it routed back into the, uh, in between the fiberglass and the frame, it then drops down inside of this front storage bay. Found a good mounting spot for the DC to DC battery charger on the wooden uh, wall divider in between the front storage bay and the mid storage bay. Um, now I just gotta rot my wires and then I'm gonna be punching through up there to get into the battery bay. All right, I've gone ahead and measured out how much wire I need to get to the battery charger, which is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and snip that right there. Now we're gonna strip these back a little bit so that we can make some nice ring connectors. And this line is already fused coming from the truck. So I don't need a second fuse on the trailer side. 
because it's already fused inside the truck. And I am gonna fuse it coming out of the charger going into the uh, batteries. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put some heat shrink on these connections. And now these are ready to go into the DC to DC charger inside the trailer. All right, I've gone ahead and ran my wires over here and now I can just hook them up, positive input and negative input. Now I have my battery connections coming from the truck in to the battery charger. I need to go ahead and work on the DC out, which goes to the battery bank, which is right through that wall. So what I went ahead and did was fed uh, some two gauge wire through to the distance that I need. And now I'm gonna measure on this side how much wire I need so that I can make my cut and make my connections. Now we need to go ahead and make our connections on the output side to go to the battery bin. All right, everything is done and wired up. From the truck, we have the positive and negative in, positive and negative out that goes to the battery bank. And then this little yellow wire here is because this specific battery charger needs a uh, positive signal into this little input over here to tell it to turn on. So I just went ahead and jumpered it over to the positive coming in from the truck. So once I plug it in, the battery charger is gonna turn on. Once it goes through the wall up there, we're gonna come out into the battery bank. comes through our wall right here, goes through a fuse, and then down into the battery on the positive side, and on the negative, it just goes straight to the negative post. Well, that's it for this week's video on how to install a DC to DC battery charger. Now, that's just how I installed my DC to DC battery charger. It doesn't mean it's how, how you have to install yours. So if you want to uh, go ahead and subscribe, comment below what you thought, uh, give me a like on the video. Uh, next week, we are installing the Victron BMB712 battery monitor. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. We'll see you next week. Thanks.